So we've put the time and effort into the engine. It's time to go start it and you get this. Well, she cranks, but do we have spark? Do we have fuel? What's going on? Today, I'm gonna help you figure it out. We're gonna dive into some of the fuel system. Hey everyone, it's Josh with Motorcycle and Power Sports News, and we are back with another installment of Project X. Now in this, obviously, she cranks, but doesn't start. Fuel issue or spark issue? So, easy way to figure that out in most cases is to pull the airbox lid off, go ahead and spray some starting fluid in there, or something of that nature, a few drops of gasoline. If it kicks over and tries to start, well then we know we've probably got a fuel issue. Something else that we can look at is there's a fuel pressure test port right here. So let's dive in and see what we need to do with that. Let's say you've put some starting fluid in it and it kicks over a couple of drops of gasoline. It kicks over, tries to start. Well, that tells us that we've got spark, we've got compression, obviously not getting fuel because it needed you to add it. So we need to look at the fuel system to see if and where there may be an issue with that. That being said, what you'll do is you'll turn the key on. When you turn the key on, you'll probably hear the fuel pump kick on. Or if you don't hear it kick on, that's a pretty good sign that it may be bad. But we need to diagnose that further. So let's give this a listen and see what we got. It should have cycled by now, and I didn't hear anything. So that tells me it's probably not working. The next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna take a look at, there's this fuel pressure test fitting right down here. This, you can use pretty much a tester, an automotive tester that you can get from most local parts stores. This is just a Schrader valve like what's on your tires. Now, I'm gonna tell you, do not use a tire pressure gauge because liquids and gases work very differently in how you do pressure with them. So. Make sure you get a fuel pressure gauge to test this, but we're gonna take a look at this, just another quick and easy way that tells you what's going on. So as I mentioned, there is a Schrader valve here, which under this cap looks very similar to a tire pressure valve or the valve stem in your tires. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to see if there's fuel pressure here. Now, the recommendation from Polaris is 39 PSI. So if you've got a gauge that you're gonna put on there, 39 PSI is kind of that gold number that we're looking for. A few PSI one direction or the other isn't gonna be the end of the world, but make sure that we're within a decent range with that. In this, what we're gonna do is we wanna make sure fuel doesn't go squirting everywhere because after all, we are dealing with a highly flammable substance, but you basically wanna poke at the center of the Schrader valve with a screwdriver or something of that nature. And there's a drip of fuel, but there's no pressure behind it, which once again leads me to believe we've got a fuel pump issue. We realize we're not getting fuel out of here, but is it because the pump is bad or is it we're not getting electricity for the pump to work? That's the big thing that we've got to look at with this. So in this, I've got it disconnected. What I'm gonna to do too is when I turn the key, I'm gonna to listen to hear the fuel pump relay click. And I hear it click in there. What happens is, is the fuel pump won't run if the engine's not running. What it does is it does have a prime cycle when you initially turn the key on. So that way it builds up fuel pressure. That way you've got enough to start that engine. What we're looking for is we want to make sure that it is going through that prime cycle and that we are getting power for that. So there is, on this model, check your wiring diagram, it may be different on yours. On this one, there is a red wire with a black stripe. That is the power that powers both the fuel pump and the sending unit inside here. What we're gonna do is we are gonna disconnect it and we are gonna probe that connector. And what I should see when I turn the key on is I should see this light up for about a half a second or so. And if that does, that lets me know that we've got electricity to the fuel pump here. So let's see what we got. And we got light. So, and the light turned on when you heard the relay click and it turned off when you heard the relay click again. So that tells me 
we've probably got a bad fuel pump in here. Thankfully, Bronco sent us a new one, so we're gonna go ahead and replace it, and let's see if that helps solve the problem. Now that we know we've got to take the fuel pump out, you can get it out with the tank and everything in here, but most of the time it seems like just because of luck, the fuel pump usually goes out when the tank is full. So we're actually gonna go ahead and pull the tank out. That way we can set it down, we can get it on an area where we can easily work on it, and we can make sure that we're not dumping fuel all over everything. Simple enough, obviously we've already got the plastics off, it took the airbox cover off, we're just gonna pull these bolts out, pop the tank up. So now that we've got the tank out and in a spot where we can work on it, like I said, there's a fair bit of fuel in here, so I wanna make sure that this is one of the higher spots of the tank, so that way we don't make a mess out of things. That being said, T25 is what's gonna pull this out, but before you do that, you really wanna make sure that you get this top area clean, whether you use a blow gun, or just wipe it down, go to the towel or some Windex or something of that nature, because what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna take any dirt that's outside and let it get into the tank. There's a filter in there, but we really don't wanna test that thing. Let's make sure we get it clean, and that way we can get a good installation and get it all back together. You do wanna be reasonably careful in pulling this out because of the float system that's on it for the fuel gauge. Also, as you pull it out, make sure you let it drip out a little bit so that way you aren't dumping fuel all over the place. Like that. So now that we've got the entire sending unit assembly out, Bronco sent us the fuel pump assembly here. Now the cool thing about this is, is we don't have to replace all this stuff. The sending unit for the fuel level gauge still works really good on this, but there's other stuff we do want to replace and Bronco does include that. So there's the fuel pump itself in here. Now they've sealed up the ends with these rubber caps so that way no nastiness gets in there and destroys it ahead of time. We've got a brand new filter for the bottom of the tank also, and if you look, it's got a nice plastic structure in there, so that way the filter doesn't collapse on itself. We've got a brand new fuel pressure regulator, because if you're replacing the pump, we've already got all this apart, we may as well do the regulator, because it's mounted right up top here. And then we're dealing with fuel, and we know what fuel does to rubber pieces, so we've got brand new gaskets for the top, for the seals, everything like that. So what we're gonna do next is we are gonna take the fuel pump assembly over to the workbench, we're gonna get things apart, we're gonna start replacing the pump, regulator, and other pieces in there. So the couple of things you want to be aware of when you put this back together, now that we've got the filter and everything like that on the bottom, you got to make sure that this open area lines up with this basically D side here. On top of that, this is where the fuel is going to go up that the fuel pump is pumping. There is the top of the fuel pump here with that rubber piece that we put on that. That you need to make sure slides up into there. So it's a bit of lining everything up making sure that we've got it all together. 
and then wiggling it all in. Got the end cap, everything back on. It's all held together, it's all nice and tight and sealed up in there. Now, we wanna make sure as we put this back together that we're careful of the filter here because this has a plastic spine in there to make sure that it stays puffed out and doesn't collapse on itself. The other thing is that this is your fuel level sender. So this acts very much like a toilet bowl float in the same way. That sends a signal up to your dashboard in terms of letting you know how much fuel's on there. We wanna make sure that as we put this in, we're pretty careful with this because this is attached to sensor right here. We don't want to bend any of this or cause any damage. So make sure you're careful as you slide it back in. While we've got the fuel tank off, we may as well take care of the throttle cable. Once again, 14 years of jamming on the uh, throttle cable there. I'm willing to bet there's some stretch. If not, there's probably some mud that's been in here. So we're gonna replace the throttle cable while we're at it. Now, simply with this, we've gotta take this headlight cover off. The throttle control up here, you actually pry the top of it off. And that being said, you're supposed to start at this front right corner and work your way around. You'll pry that off, we'll get the cable out of there. We'll pull the old one through there and get it off at the throttle body here. And we're gonna do the installation pretty much the exact backwards way that we pulled it off. As you go to pull this out, you want to relax the throttle cable so that way you've got slack here. And bring it around, there's an opening in it, and I would suggest you put your thumb on top of the brass end here so you don't lose that. But as you pull that out, it will release. Keep a hold of the brass piece here because you will need to reuse that will be good to replace the cable. So to put the cable back in, it's gonna be pretty simple. This is just gonna thread into the throttle body. We'll put the brass piece on the end of this, run it around, and we'll start rerouting it back up to the pump throttle. When we get all this back together here, the, one of the big things you wanna look at is we wanna make sure that we've got 1 8 to 1 16th of an inch of free play here. So this, we're at about an eighth before it starts to engage the throttle cable here. And that's good, because if you don't have enough free play, the throttle's gonna get held open and obviously the ATV will not idle correctly. If you've got too much, you're losing half your throttle throw there. So this 1 8 inch, is about where we want to be on that, so we're in good shape. If it needs to be tightened up, you can loosen this adjuster here, which will spread this apart, 
makes the cable housing longer, but keeps the cable the same length. Do that in small increments until you get in the right spot, but we should be in good shape. So we'll put the cap on, put the hand guard back on, we're done with the throttle. Now that we've got the pump regulator and fuel level sender back in the tank, I'm gonna stick it back on the quad. Our fuel line's hooked up. We just need to hook up the connector for the electrical side of it. And we'll make sure our vent hose is hooked up. Now before you go to start it, realize that the fuel system's pretty well empty right now. So you may have to cycle the key a few times in order to build up enough fuel in the system for this thing to start. I'm hearing noise, that's a good sign. Starts, runs, good throttle cable now. Looking forward to the next episode. We'll see you guys out on the trail.